two weeks ago we got first half payment for the project so now it's 100% sure that it will happen and we have to work on it uh, I, I was a little bit uh, worried if we are going to make it on time so these past two weeks I spent entirely making the the project instead of making videos and we made quite progress and so in this video I want to talk about what we made and what is planned for the upcoming week so that we uh, make the project on time all the workshop is quite messy so let's start with the glass components this is the front window we got already 40 of them uh, the this is a standard watch glass used in a chemical laboratories uh, what we needed we needed the edge to be crowned and polished so that it better uh, fits to the envelope and this operation was done by our supplier Sklodasha. We work with them for many years and uh, they always do great job. So uh, we got this from them. They also made the envelope for us. Uh, there is a small change. We asked them to add evacuation pipe to the design. So now we have a short evacuation pipe here. And uh, once the tube is sealed with all the internal parts inside, we will weld a longer one so that we can fit it to our pumping station. So we have 40 of these and 40 of these for first experiments and uh, the rest is coming within a few weeks. The last remaining part from the glass is the stem. This is our standard stem. I was talking about it in the previous videos. So we are now making the full batch of them, 200 pieces, so that we have some reserve. And uh, this will be finished soon. So this is the glass elements. Uh, as for the ceramic parts inside, uh, we have also all of them. Uh, we have the insulator rings, we have the rods, which will uh, be used for turning the digits on them. And uh, the last part which was remaining is uh, the ceramic tubing, which will be used for holding the, the stems. I took some parts here, I marked them with black. Uh, you can see it here so that nobody confused them with the already clean parts here, so that I can touch them and uh, use them in experiments. So they will be threaded on the rod like this and between them there will be the individual digits. You can see they are quite huge compared to our regular tube. Here we have the ceramic insulators and these are the large one for the H tube. Next I mentioned the ceramic tubes. This will be used with a rod inside and the rod, this is made of stainless steel, will be spot welded to another metal part inside the tube and it will provide a support for the stem like this. There will be a glue on it.
I already tried to attach the stems to the ceramic rods by gluing, but uh, it didn't work very well because the fixtures I designed were made of plastics and uh, this, is, this is the easiest way for us, like model them in 3D and then print them on the 3D printer. If you need to adjust the fixture, you just go back to the Fusion 360 and adjust some small details and print it again. If the fixture is good uh, and you need more of them, you just print more of them. So it's, it's very convenient to use uh, 3D printed fixtures. But in this case, the ceramic glue needs higher temperature to be cured enough so that you can take it out of the fixture and move it to the oven for, for firing and for the final hardening. So for this operation, we won't be able to use 3D printed fixtures. So instead I will use a full metal fixture that will not melt during the curing in the oven. Another part that I'm changing is the metal ring around the stem support. This is the part of the tube that will hold the ceramic tube with the stem glued on it. Like this. Yeah. And uh, my original idea was to use a uh, one millimeter stainless steel rod that we would bend ourselves into the circular shape and spot weld, uh, spot weld stainless steel rods on it. Uh, it turned out that welding the circular rods with the circular cross-section to another rod is very difficult and it's, it's definitely possible but it's not uh, reliable and is uh, too tricky and uh, the employees would be struggling with it all the time because it turns to burn away, it tends to bend in wrong angles and uh, it's simply not good for series production. So. Instead of this, uh, I came up with a different design. There would be flat sheet metal, which will be bent and the rods will be spot welded to it. I got first sheet from Printed CZ. They have a fiber laser for cutting stencils for SMT application, so they can cut really fine patterns in a thin stainless steel sheets. This is 0.2 mm thickness and in the final design it will be 0.3. This is for testing because we can receive these parts in three days. They are very fast. And uh, the final parts will be made by etching because it's less expensive. As you can see, it's not very rigid. It, it can be quite easily bent. So if we want to use it as a support, we need to do something with it. I'm planning to make a tool for a press and uh, press this internal edge inwards like this, like bent it inward so that uh, we have edge which is bent under some radius and it will it will give us some some strength into this part. I have already a press for it. You can see it here. So it's old mechanical press. Like with all the parts that we use, uh, we could easily order them in China or anywhere else in the world and we would get them for a good price and in good time. Uh, so it might seem like overkill to try to set up on a small handheld press and uh, learn all the stuff that you need to, you know, designing the tools and using it because it's not so simple. These small hand presses were always used in all the tube making factories. So I want to learn to use it as well. Even now we have small uh, factories in Czech Republic, uh, in Germany and everywhere and they use presses like this to make their parts. So I want uh, to be able to, uh, to make the small pressed parts in-house as well. Uh, next part is the anode cup. Instead of stainless steel we want to use a deep drawing steel which is much easier to form. Uh, it doesn't return to its original shape like, like 
the hard stainless steel. Uh, here you can see first result. We had to order this steel. It's surprisingly difficult to, to get in these thicknesses like 0.2 millimeters. It's not standard. The, you, can, you can get anything from 0.5 millimeter and up, but getting anything uh, below half millimeter is really difficult. For this press forming, we have a local supplier. Again, I'm trying, if it is possible, I'm trying to use local companies. They need to adjust the tools, like the tooling, the, the dies for the forming, and they will have it uh, next Tuesday. So next Tuesday, we should have first part where the, the top part will, will slide all the way down around the bottom so that we, all these like, tabs will be bent down and it will be fully formed so uh, let's hope it should be next Tuesday and once we have this this will be the uh, last part that we need for assembly of the internal system like uh, not the last we are still waiting for the digits I will get to this later but the digits are standard parts that we already know how to get okay that's for the old cup uh, Let's check out some other other progress. Uh, here we can see work of Radim, and uh, this is the electronics for the for the panel. So here is the master board, and uh, he is driving here 10, 10 slave boards. Yeah, works. These are some rejected tubes, so you can see marks on them. This one is leaky. So this is the basic animation of the rain effect. We have also the slow fade up from the zero. I don't know if, if it will be displayed now. Mm, hopefully. Yes. Yes, you can see it. Under the video where I was discussing the electronics, there were several of you mentioning that we will need more resolution on the lower end of the brightness, like in the dark end. and. That's exactly true, like my original expectations were that we, we will use like 127 levels of brightness and uh, it turned out that even 4096 is not enough at the uh, dark side of the animation. So uh, we had to, or Radim had to completely redesign the, the software and he somehow did it. I must confess that I, I, I wasn't following this much in detail. He was working completely alone, independently on me, which is the preferred way because I could focus completely on my work and it works real well. Uh, we will see, of course, on the large tubes, maybe we will need to adjust something, but uh, in general, the electronics and the application is finished. We already ordered full batch of the slave boards. We will get them this week and uh, they will be immediately sent for the assembly so we should get them in in like two weeks we will have the electronics completed okay and another part of the project is increasing the oxygen supply so it looks quite complex but uh, basically it's just Cuts from the oxygen concentrators mounted in a custom frame. Uh, on the bottom part we have the compressors. They will deliver enough air for all six sets of the cylinders with the molecular sieves. Uh, so the air goes from the compressors here. Uh, this is a chiller for the because the air is hot, so it needs to cool down here. And uh, because it will cool down, there will be some water condensate which will go down here and it will be possible to flush it away from the system, the water. The dry air will go into the valves and uh, from the valves it will be delivered to the cylinders. And from the cylinders there will be just the oxygen going out. There are some troubles, of course. We are still tuning the timing to get the best, best uh, concentration of the oxygen. We can't achieve 90 plus right now. Maybe it's because we have too long hoses uh, for the cylinders and uh, there are some other issues, but it's not that bad. Uh, all this project is developed by Lukash, so it's 
quite a headache for him, but he deals really well with it. He makes progress on it and he also works almost independently on it. So that's great. In the future, this will become a main oxygen supply for our burners and uh, we will not need a liquid oxygen. I know that it's a common to have a liquid oxygen at the shop, but I want to avoid it. The consumption of the oxygen is quite high, the bottles are replaced quite quite frequently and uh, it needs to be done carefully. The bottle with oxygen usually tends to run out uh, during the weekend when you cannot order, when you cannot get a new one, so you are out of oxygen. I was playing with it on Friday and uh, there is now really wrong timing currently so we gonna get over 60% right now. Okay and just quickly some other other things in the other rooms. So this is the carriage burner for the lathe that we will use for sealing the front window into the the envelope, the mount is finished and the last thing I need to do is to put some valves for the gas and for the oxygen here. And here you can hear the pumping system running. Uh, this is a new feature that we put here. So in the current interface we have several like uh, buttons here, like start, pumping, then start induction start filling, switch or swap the tubes and turn off. And now we have a new option here which is called cleaning. So what it does, uh, once the shift is finished, uh, Katka starts the cleaning and the cleaning runs uh, until 3 a.m. because she comes the next day at 5 a.m. And what it does, uh, it, it heats up the chamber here and it helps, the heat helps to release all the impurities that were accumulated from, from the tubes because here we have the bake-out oven. So when you put the tubes here, the oven slides on the tubes and it heats them up close to 500 degrees of Celsius. And this temperature helps the impurities uh, possible like uh, grease or just hydrocarbon stuff that remains inside the tubes it helps them to be released away the problem is that the impurities they all doesn't go straight to the pump but they tend to stick to the cold surface of the of the chamber and they tend to accumulate here uh, and they increase the the background pressure of the system so uh, with the new cleaning feature, uh, this will be clean because we, we were running this cleaning uh, randomly, manually. Now it's, it's a regular procedure that is run every day and it helps to clean the system. Like you can see that there is now already 5 times 10 to minus 7. It's been running from yesterday because now it's weekend, so uh, it runs all the weekend. Why am I talking about this in relation with H-Tube? Uh, we have here a residual gas analyzer connected to the system. Uh, this device tells you composition of the residual gases inside the system. So uh, what I want to do, I want to compare the footprint of the residual gases uh, during pumping of our standard tubes and then once we have the H-tube uh, for the pumping, I want to compare the footprint and the residual gases of the of the H-tube and uh, if, like the best scenario is that there will be no difference and if there is difference it will mean that we have some other gases being released uh, during pumping of the H-tube and this can indicate some possible problems or just differences. We know that the current materials works, we will use some new materials in the tube so 
uh, we want to be sure that they don't release any new gases or they don't change the structure of the gases that are released too much. These are the oxygen concentrators that will be replaced with the machine I showed you. Like it will take roughly the same space as two oxygen concentrators, but it will deliver the oxygen like six concentrators. This was a little bit chaotic update. Thank you for watching. I hope that in the next videos I will show more from the making and from the manufacture itself because right now it's more about like planning, talking about the planning, talking about like what we are waiting for and what still didn't arrive but that's fine it's always like this at the beginning and once we get all the parts in house and once we get, get, get everything uh, we will start finally working on it and I hope this will be more more exciting to watch so thank you for watching anyway and keep in touch see you in the next video